behalf of the officers and members of the Royal Arch Chapters, Council of Royal and Select Master Masons, and the Commanderies of Knights Templar, I would like to congratulate you for having become members of the greatest fraternal institution in the world. We know the pleasure and gratification experienced on having been raised to the sublime degree of a Master Mason. You have every right to lift your head with pride in the knowledge that you are numbered with millions of good men throughout the world who stand for the continual promotion of brotherly love, religious freedom, and democracy, which will bring peace and happiness to men of all creeds and nations. There are no higher degrees than those of the Blue or Symbolic Lodge. Any additional degrees you may receive in Masonry only serve to supplement and amplify the symbolic degrees that have been conferred upon you in your Lodge. Throughout Masonry, you will learn of the two rites of Freemasonry, the Scottish Rite and the York Rite. A rite is not a ceremony or ritual, it is a system of administration and organized structure. Your York Rite journey begins with the Blue or Symbolic Lodge as the basic foundation of ancient York Masonry and includes the Chapter of Royal Arch Masons, the Council of Royal and Select Master Masons, and the Commandery of Knights Templar. All symbolic lodges are York Rite, regardless of where they are located around the world. Masonic scholars and some early manuscripts cause us to believe the York Rite originated with a charter issued to the operative Masons of England in the year 926 AD by King Athelstan, a grandson of Alfred the Great, who was a great patron of Masonry. It is also believed that the degrees consisted of nothing more than that of the communication of grips and words until 1725, and only two levels were conferred. Masonic historians agree that sometime between 1723 and 1730, the second and third degrees were evolved, and in the evolution of degrees, ritualism and symbolism were developed, resulting in the intellectual and philosophical Freemasonry of today. In 1751, a warrant was issued to the Provincial Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania by the Grand Lodge of England, which became the first Grand Lodge in the United States. So much for background. You have been initiated into the York Rate of Freemasonry by the degrees conferred by the Symbolic Lodge. You may already be or may have been asked to become a Scottish Rite Mason. Although some may argue that one rate is more beneficial than the other, or confers higher degrees, we of Freemasons have a very common goal, regardless of what path we take through the various bodies that exist within our fraternity. The entire mission of Freemasonry is to mold men into developing an extraordinary understanding of honor, integrity, and duty towards their country and their fellow man, regardless of race, religion, and social standing, and live up to and beyond those expectations. We are to elevate ourselves to live to a creed that few others will be able to achieve. Those are the very lessons we attempt to instill in our members. Both rites of Freemasonry unite in that common objective. My purpose here today is to provide you with an understanding of the other primary bodies within the York Rite. The three other organizations to which one may readily petition are the Royal Arch Chapter, the Council of Royal and Select Master Masons, and the Commandery of Knights Templar. There are numerous other bodies within the York Rite, but they are primarily invitational in nature, with one being invited to join based on a level of service or distinction within the primary bodies. There is a prerequisite to follow should you journey further in the remaining bodies of the York Rite, the first of which is that membership at a Royal Arch Chapter is required before you may petition any other body in the York Rite beyond the Symbolic Lodge. The ancient manuscripts tell us, along with a resolution adopted by the Grand Lodge in 1798, that the degrees of ancient craft masonry were the Entered Apprentice, Fellow Craft, and Master Mason, including the Holy Royal Arch. Although Royal Arch masonry existed within the United States, and particularly this Commonwealth for a number of years during the 1700s, the Grand Lodge in 1795 formed the Grand Holy Royal Arch Chapter to formally bring these independent chapters under the control of the Grand Lodge. The Grand Master served also as the presiding officer or first great chief of the Grand Chapter until 1824, 
when the Grand Chapter was granted independent status. Thus, the Grand Holy Royal Arch Chapter of Pennsylvania is the only Masonic body born out of the Grand Lodge, and the individual chapters are structured in a very similar manner to the Blue Lodges. To this day, it operates without a formal warrant of constitution, and operates only to the extent of the powers granted to it by the Grand Lodge. Why is this history lesson so important? Very simply, if you decide to join a Royal Arch Chapter, you will find the lessons of the degrees very closely intertwined with those of the Symbolic Lodge, and expands upon them. The lessons taught the degree of Mark Master Mason enjoins charity in the fullest and most comprehensive sense of the word. And here you will learn the meaning of the Senior Warden's words, pay their craft their wages if any be due and how the work of one fellow craft was distinguished from another in order to determine how much each earned. You will also learn other important lessons of integrity and truth, and how falsehood can lead you to a very dangerous path. The degree of most excellent Master Mason depicts the solemn ceremony of the dedication of King Solomon's temple, and further instills the belief in a supreme being. Here you will witness King Solomon's prayer and the dedication of the temple by God. The lessons taught in this degree exemplify a builder of character, unity of purpose, and morality. The Royal Arch degree is a capstone of ancient masonry. In the lessons taught in the Master Mason's degree, we learn that the first temple of our present life must be destroyed, and how we must prepare our work for that spiritual temple not made by hands in heaven. In the Royal Arch degree, you will learn how King Solomon's temple, after standing for 400 years, was destroyed by the Babylonians, and how the various tribes of Israel were dispersed. You will learn of the return of two tribes to Jerusalem, after 70 years in captivity, and how they rebuilt the temple. You will be one of the workmen as they discover the relics preserved by King Solomon 470 years earlier for future generations. Among those relics so discovered is the ancient true and secret word of a Master Mason, now the Royal Arch Mason's word. You will recall from the Master Mason's degree just conferred, you received an adopted secret word, as the original word was lost by the death of Hiram Abiff. The lessons of this degree is that by violation of God's divine commands, how an earthly temple can be destroyed, and how imperative it is for a strong spiritual attachment in order to complete an everlasting spiritual temple. A council of royal and select master masons depict the scene and efforts of very select and chosen workmen as they constructed the vaults under King Solomon's temple where the ancient relics were preserved. It is sometimes referred to as cryptic masonry as all the work was completed underground and in complete secrecy. The degrees of the council of royal and select master masons complete the story of ancient craft masonry. As we know, King Solomon's temple was constructed on Mount Moriah. This was also the legendary site where the patriarch Enoch had excavated nine vaults, one below another, in order to preserve valuable secrets. In the lowest or ninth vault, Enoch placed a stone of foundation and a triangular plate of gold upon which is inscribed the Tetragrammaton, or the name of deity. In the course of the building of the first temple, Solomon discovered the remnants of these vaults, and then issued an order to build similar vaults under his palace to preserve all those artifacts deemed of importance to the craft and to the history of the Jewish nation. All of these symbols and vaults allude to God's presence among us, and man's responsibility to, to worship in, in spirit and truth. This is the primary lesson of cryptic masonry. The degrees represent the Alpha and Omega of craft ritual. The degrees of the Council are the Royal Master, Select Master, and Super Excellent Master Mason. These degrees fill in the Hiramic legend, and in fact, as candidates, you will come face to face with Hiram just before his assassination. The soliloquy of Hiram Abiff in the degree of Royal Master on the subject of death has been proclaimed by many as one of the most sublime passages in the entire ritual of Freemasonry. The degree of super excellent master is not strictly a cryptic degree, but is highly dramatic. To a large extent, it is an extension of a portion of the Royal Arch degree. 
It also explains the background for the Order of the Red Cross in Commandery. The Knights Templar is a Christian fraternal organization that was founded in the 11th century. Originally, Knights Templar were laymen who protected and defended Christians traveling to Jerusalem. These men took vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, and were renowned for their fierceness and courage in battle. The principles upon which the Order of Knighthood is founded are expressed in ritual and symbolism and are founded upon the teachings of the Christian religion. Templary extols the doctrine of human brotherhood and benevolence towards all mankind. It commends the reign of peace and glorifies the search for divine truth. It vows to draw its sword in defense of innocent maidens, destitute widows, helpless orphans, and the Christian religion. Knights Templar were originally called the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ. It was a warrior organization given to protecting the pilgrims traveling to visit the Holy Shrine. There were confrontations with popes and kings, banishment to islands in the Mediterranean Sea, and many wars. They accumulated great wealth, which the church coveted, and their leaders, such as Jacques de Molay, were tortured and put to death for refusing to divulge secrets. Our youth organization for young men was named after this great Templar leader. The Knights Templar is the only uniformed organization within the primary Masonic bodies. They can be easily recognized by their chapeaus with white plumage, black uniforms, and carrying swords at their side. You may say that this doesn't sound much like it fits in with the other organizations within the Masonic network. Nothing could be further from the truth. A parallel is found between the organizations thus. The site of the temple is the place where the order was founded, as the Templars were the protectors of the holy shrines. In the Order of Malta, we learn of the history of the order and Christ's birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension. The order prepares the candidate for the spiritual order of the temple, where, as a pilgrim, he will journey through life and confront his own mortality. In this order, one of the most impressive ceremonies at all of Freemasonry, knighthood will be conferred on each candidate alone, as he assumes a most solemn and sacred vow. Here we also find a parallel between the Hiramic legend and the Templars. The life of Christ is a central theme, and here we find the tragic events of Calvary and the crucifixion of Christ related to the lessons taught in the Master Mason's degree. Calvary is a small hill situated due west of Mount Moriah, the site of the Temple of Solomon. The cleft or cave in the rocks formed in this hill, in which the burial of the body of Jesus was made, also identifies Calvary as the spot where the weary travelers sought to take rest as they searched for the body of Hiram Abiff. The resurrection of Jesus from the cave or sepulcher is most strikingly parallel to the last part of the ritual of the third degree as the body of Hiram is raised. The degrees conferred in the remaining bodies within the York Rite are a personal, intimate experience for each candidate. The work performed in these organizations is very similar to what you just experienced in the symbolic lodge. One hears that the York Rite is the long way, but the long way to what? The entire aim of Freemasonry, regardless of right, is to develop the membership into men of the highest moral and social leadership. Yes, we use biblical events in Jewish history to veil the allegory in teaching the very important qualities of integrity, honor, and service to our country and our fellow man. It is our intention to make good men great men that others look up to and want to follow in their path. That is the true lesson and secret of Freemasonry. Yes, there are numerous advantages to the York Rite journey. First, to complete the Master Mason's degree in the history of King Solomon's Temple. Learn by the wisdom of our three grandmasters how ancient craft masonry was preserved and discover the ancient true and secret word of a Master Mason. To broaden your knowledge of masonry and masons throughout the commonwealth as the chapters councils and commanderies bring together men from various symbolic lodges into common meetings which expands your brotherhood with others and your understanding of the philosophy of our fraternity lastly if you enjoyed the ritual conferred upon you the york Rite gives you a great opportunity to personally involve yourself expand your leadership qualities and become an accomplished in masonic knowledge and ritual your symbolic lodge is the first and most important step in this journey. 
If you have a desire to learn and preserve our teachings to future generations, become active in your Blue Lodge, and the remaining York Great Bodies will further expand and enhance your knowledge and experience in preserving our great institution. Thank you for joining this great fraternity. We hold out our invitation for you to pursue further latent knowledge in the York Rite. Visit our website at yorkrite.com pa or mymasonicjourney.com. <laughs>